So with our database availability group set up, we can now test that high availability solution for our mailbox server roles and see what happens when we do database switchovers and failovers and even simulate a server failure. So first of all, let's have a look at the health of our database copies. So from PowerShell, we can run get mailbox database copy status with an asterisk and we'll see all of those mailbox database copies and their status at the moment. So currently DB1, DB2 and the archive DB are mounted on EBC EX1 and the copies are healthy on EBC EX2 and we've also got healthy content indexes. Now when I first set up these database replicas those content indexes were failed. I've just left my servers for a little while and it's basically sorted itself out. Now in some cases that might need some manual remediation uh, but you'll often find that content indexes are able to bring themselves healthy again if you just give them a little bit of time. So now let's have a look at what the different database failover and switchover and server failure scenarios mean for the end user when we have this high availability deployment. I'm logged on here to my workstation with uh, Alan Reed's account and I can actually do all of this testing from the workstation because of course the Exchange Admin Center is just a uh, web-driven admin console so I can log in with my administrator account and do the administration right from here. So we'll just go down to the servers section and then into databases. There's our database copies. And it'll probably be helpful to know which database Alan Reed is actually located on. So I'll go back to recipients. We'll just have a quick look at the uh, properties of Alan's mailbox and here in the general section. We'll just expand more options there. We can see he's on DB1. Okay. So DB1 is the database that we're going to do a manual switch over for and see what happens to Outlook down here. What I might actually do is also bring up the connection status. So what we're looking out for is any serious period of disconnection or, or perhaps a dialog box that pops up with an error. That would be an example of something that is not a good user experience. Whereas if we can do this database switchover and basically see uh, no disconnections or at least very brief disconnections and no pop-ups here in Outlook that would disturb a user, then that would be a good user experience. So select DB1. This is the current active and mounted copy on EBC EX1. And here we can see our healthy passive copy. We have this link here where we can activate this copy. So what will happen is this copy will be dismounted and this copy that was passive will be mounted and made as the active copy. So I click on activate. You get one warning, say yes. we we'll just give that a few seconds. Notice the connectivity up here changed. Nothing down the bottom yet. Operation was successful. Connectivity status all looks good there. And back here in Outlook, all folders are up to date and we're connected. And that's all basically worked fine. So what about if we have an unplanned failover or switchover that may occur? And just keeping an eye on the content index states here, a passive copy has a healthy content index. The active mounted copy currently has an index state of failed. So again, we just give that a little bit of time. We may find that that uh, sorts itself out. If it doesn't, then we can take manual steps to remediate that. But I won't let that hold me up right now. Instead, what I'm going to do is proceed with the simulation of a server failure for EBC EX2. And we'll watch what happens to DB1, which is currently active on EBC EX2 and see whether it's able to fail over back to the other DAG member. And the way I'm going to simulate that server failure is just by powering off the server in Hyper-V. So here's my Hyper-V console and here's my second exchange server.
and I'm simply going to turn it off so that's powered off straight away let's jump back quickly to the client machine we see some connection status changes there remember that the server is also a client access server so it's possible that the client the Outlook client was actually connected to that server for client access connectivity as well which means that our DNS round robin solution is going to come into play here with the client access server connectivity also failing over to the other available server so that connectivity has been re-established our Outlook status all folders are up to date and we are connected now let's just refresh this view here and see what we find So the database copy is active and mounted on EBC EX1, so it has failed over to EBC EX1. And the copy on EBC EX2 is in a service down status at the moment and an unknown status for the content index because of course that server is offline. So it looks like that has worked pretty well. We're able to do a manual switch over of the database from EBC EX1 to EX2 without any end user experience issues. And we're also able to initiate a failover by causing a server failure on EX2. And the database moved back to EBC EX1 without any issues as well. There was just that brief connectivity pause, very similar to our earlier tests for the client access server role. And in fact, what likely happened there was that the client was connected to EBC EX2 for client access. And so that server role needed to fail over as well, thanks to DNS round robin. So now let's bring our server back online and see what happens to the database copies when that server that failed powers back on again. I'll jump back into my Hyper-V console. Let's power that server back on. And I'll just give that server a few minutes to start up properly and then we'll check on the status of our database copies. All right, that server's had enough time to get started, so let's have a look now at the health of our database copies. Let's refresh this view here. Now our active database copies remained on EBC EX1. Obviously there was no reason for them to automatically switch back to EBC EX2 just because it came online. And DB1 is active and mounted and here is passive and healthy on EBC EX2 and has a healthy content index state as well. So really that's gone about as well as you can expect it to. We simulated a server failure where it just powered off database failed over as you'd want it to and then when the server came back online database replication was able to recover on its own and we now have a passive healthy copy again